standing in Clear Creek, which is the upper area of Clear Creek, and just over there is the ridge line that goes in, all the water that goes on the other side of that ridge line goes into Beaver Lake. Clear Creek goes west into the Illinois River, so we're in the Illinois River watershed. I'm standing in a riffle area, and this is always a good place for us to collect macro and vertebrates. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up a rock or two and we're going to look underneath it. And when you're here collecting, you'll pick up these rocks and you will be able to see on the underneath side of it some organisms. Like here's a couple of, of water pennies right here. And uh, a lot of times you'll find planaria and stonefly. So let me pick up a couple more, okay? And let, let's look at that. Okay. Now this one has a planaria on it. That's a planaria there crawling around. And here's another one, a small one, crawling on it. And there's one there. No, that's a stick. Never mind. So there's a couple of uh, planaria. When you pick up a rock like this and it has things like this on it, we'll have some trays over on some tables and you will just take kind of take these off and put them in those trays so we can look at them under a microscope and you can see the cross-eyed planaria. Okay, these things are regenerating organisms. They get shredded. Most of the parts can form into another planaria. Okay, let me see if... This is the encasement of a caddisfly uh, larva, nymph of a caddisfly. And anytime you see a cluster of rocks like that, it, it's an encasement of an organism that lives in it. You kind of have, you can see part of it coming out right here, but you kind of have to look at these under the stereoscope to see their legs and eyes and things. Uh, so these are some of the things that you're going to be looking for. I see more caddisfly stuff. Uh, water penny right there. That's just a, a flat thing that kind of sticks to the rock. A little microorganism, or not macroorganism, in the stream. And you can see the caddisfly encasements. Now you can find things like stoneflies and mayflies under these stones too when you pick them up. It's their way of of uh, staying in one one place with, with current with high currents of the stream. Now, when uh, you're in a riffle area, and this is a riffle area, as compared to that right there, which is a pool area. When you're in a riffle area, you'll be using these nets to collect organisms. And the way you do it is you stand upstream of the net stick the net in the stream like this and kick the rocks and the organisms underneath the rocks will flow downstream into the net and then you can hold it up and look to see what you have. You may have to do that several times because remember we're trying to find out how much this stream was impacted by urban development and uh, you will be able to pick up different things. Sometimes you might have to look for a better riffle area. There's a better riffle area right on the other side of this pool where the water rushes a lot faster and it catches those, those macro invertebrates in the stream and gets them in your net. This area here, the pool area, is where you're going to be using the sinks. We'll find a better pool area than this one because it has a lot of stumps and snags in it. But up there, we will use the same and try to catch as many fish and stuff as we can. So let's walk down here for a second. Work all these ripple areas. 
areas for macro invertebrates. And this is a really cool, ideal place right here to test micro and macro invertebrates. I'm going to stick the net in this fast flowing water. So if you're, when you are doing the, the riffle areas in fast flowing water, I want you to do several of them. There's several places throughout the stream where there are ripple areas. Move the stones to one side. Look in your net. Oh, look in here. See, I have a lot of darters in here. So I've gotten fish as well. Rainbow darters and orange-throated darters. So you can, you can pick up fish that way, but you will also pick up macro invertebrates. Now we want to separate our species out on our fish and stuff when you're doing these things. But we also want to look for little insect nymphs as well. You remember in the labs when we were doing the pond study, we had dragonfly nymphs and damselfly nymphs and things like that. You'll pick these up in the riffle areas. So we'll look for that. And don't forget where you get the planaria too. We want to look at those. So with the number of students we have out here, we're going to catch a lot of interesting things. I want to see if any of these are endangered. Looks like they're all orange-throated darters. Oops. I don't, when you pick up a fish, make sure you have your hands wet. That way you don't take all the protective oils off of the body of the fish. Looks like it might be a Johnny darter. It does have a stripe on its eye though. Uh, let's get a, a good look at that so I can take it back and identify, make sure it's not an Arkansas darter. If it's an Arkansas darter, it's an endangered species. So I'm gonna throw him back. And like I say, we want to look for everything, including the fish. Now, let's look at this area here. This would be more ideally suited for using a seine. It's pool-like. If you start with the seine down there, looking at this way, and have half of your group on this side walking toward the seine, you'll move the fish toward the seine, and then when you pick the seine up, you'll have it full of uh, all kinds of organs. Remember to separate, like I told you before, in lab separate out the sculpins because they will eat the smaller fish if you have them in the tray. So we want to separate the species so that we don't give a, all of our catch as food to another fish and we want to spend some time identifying. Okay? So that's the way you use a kick net. I showed you in lab how to use a seine. We're gonna use that in this area. I want you to look downstream. You can see all those riffle areas. If your group is doing the riffle area, we're gonna rotate through each area. When your group is doing the riffle area, then I want you all to, to work all of these areas where the water is flowing and you can see that it has ripples in it. And uh, you will put your net downstream, kick out the rocks in it. And you'll be surprised what you pick up, just like I picked up all those dogs there. So, planaria, um, macro invertebrates like the stonefly nymph, the dragonfly nymph, the mayfly nymph, the damselfly nymph, all of those are in here. And our, our job is to identify all the species, take phone pictures of them, so that we can have a log that we can compare to in the future if we come back and do these studies. And that way we will understand a little more about how urban development affects Clear Creek, which is a, a stream that flows into uh, Lake Fayetteville and then on into the Alamo River. This is where one of the streams that contributes all the water to the Alamo River. Not all of it, but most, a large part of it. Okay?